Good to go. Yep. All right. YouTube, what's going on? It's been a minute, almost four years to be exact with you. And we're back with some brand new content for you. And essentially this whole channel is going to be completely revamped. We'll get into that a little bit later in this video. But for now, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Andrew Moore or more commonly known as Dreezy. For those of you who are returning to my channel, thank you so much for coming back. It's greatly appreciated. And for those of you who are new here, welcome. If you do enjoy this kind of content, I ask that you please subscribe. It would mean the world to us. Right now, we are almost to 1,000 subscribers. I think we're like five away. So if you click that subscribe button, help us reach that 1,000 milestone and then 10,000 and so on, it would be greatly appreciated. But enough of all that boring stuff. Let's hop into this brand new video. So for those of you who do know me, you've probably noticed that I've gone pretty distant on all social medias. With that, I have been doing a lot of work, both on myself and with a brand new business that we've created. So to kind of sum everything up, just give you a little bit of insight here. I graduated from the University of Northern Iowa a year ago. Turns out that route wasn't for me whatsoever. Now I'm going to make a completely separate video on this later on down the road. But for right now, just understand that I hated every aspect of college. And with that being said, I've always kind of had an entrepreneurial mindset with things in life. And my dad and I, we had decided to start a business. So the business idea that I had in mind was a real estate business simply because everyone talks about how sound real estate investing actually is in this world. Not only that, I've always had a huge interest in properties, you know, rentals, uh, those mega mansions, everything like that. I love watching house flipping on, on HGTV. So two years ago, my dad and I, we started a business called Morris Property LLC. Now, when we started this business, it was strictly dedicated to house flipping. And then once we get a steady income coming from that, we would branch out into the rentals and the Airbnbs and to uh, new building projects, you know, all really anything real estate related. So we started two years ago, like I said, with buying our first house flip. That took us about five months to do. It was a real <laughs> hole of a house. So from there, we ended up doing a handful of other homes. And now we are here. We bought a block, you guys. We bought four investment properties. Now, originally, I had always dreamed of kind of flipping multiple homes, you know, doing like two homes at once and then building up into four homes. However, this is more than just a flip house. This is everything in one package. So now leading up to the purchase of this block, we originally came to look at one property and the property was the duplex. And as we were making our way up to the duplex, we noticed that there were a couple more for sale signs next door at the, uh, the three stall garage and the white house up on the corner. We didn't realize that the brown house beside that white house was for sale, but everything was for sale. So with that being said, originally we only came to look at this white duplex just so we could start building our real estate portfolio of rentals. So after looking at the duplex, we had talked some numbers with our realtor and we weren't exactly thrilled with the, uh, the income we'd be making off of it. So we kind of talked about it a little bit and then our realtor goes, well, hey, let me show you these three properties up here. So from there, it's pretty much history. We looked at all properties and even though they were sale pending at the time, that deal did fall through. We originally just wanted the duplex and then we just wanted the, uh, the white house and the brown house and the, the owner said, no, it's gotta be sold as a package deal. So like I said, that deal fell through for the other people and we came in and we picked it up. So now you're probably wondering what was all included in this block purchase? What we got was a fully rented duplex and that duplex comes with a four stall garage. It comes with two for the tenant, two for the business. And then above those two stalls for the business, we actually have an upstairs storage as well. Next to that, we have a three stall business garage that we're going to remodel and kind of fancy it up a little bit, make it a hangout spot and storage for the business. And then just up the street from that, we bought that white house and that white house is actually going to be bulldozed and we're going to do a new construction home on it. Kitty corner to that is the big brown flip house. So like I said, we got a little bit of everything. I didn't really ever imagine for this day to come where we would buy a block with all four properties side by side. And to be quite blunt, I know the future is kind of going to suck because I know that we're never going to score a purchase like this ever again in, in our lives. But for right now we're having fun with it and it's actually been a blast so far. So now that we have all that out of the way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys kind of and inside all four properties. We're gonna walk through what it is we're doing. We're gonna talk numbers, do all the project breakdowns, and then really just tell you stories about everything because all these properties have a very unique story behind them. And I think a lot of you guys are going to find it 
very interesting. So let's get into the first property. Starting off with the first property, we've got the duplex. This duplex was built in 1957. It's 1,616 square feet. Both sides are the exact same layout. Each one is two bed, one bath. Each side does have its own separate basement as well. And then like I had mentioned before, each side does have a, a garage stall and then we have the back garages. But what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna pull up a 3D model of what this looks like. Due to privacy, I didn't wanna film inside their duplex or show any pictures of how their living situation is like. With this 3D diagram, you're gonna see that each one, again, exactly the same. You walk in through the front door into the living room. From there, you enter into a kitchen which will either take you to the stairs to the basement or down a hallway into two beds and one bath. Now in the basement, each side is just wide open. There's nothing down there whatsoever. Um, just a big open room for both of them to use. Now kind of getting into the, the project details of this, of what we paid for it, we spent $169,500 on it. Estimated repairs are kind of unknown at the moment. The city's kind of been all over the place with us. I know for a fact we're gonna have to do something about the leaking windows. We're gonna have to power wash the gutters and then repaint them white. One of the windows, one of the tenants had put duct tape on a couple years ago during the winter. It's gonna have to remove that. City doesn't like that. Both sides have leaky faucets. And on top of that, we might end up just redoing some of the bathrooms and the kitchens. They're both very out of date and definitely need updates here before long. And then we have on both sides, two water heaters that leak simply because the hose is not long enough. That's supposed to go to the drain. So now the current rent is 600 for one side and 700 for the other side, adding up to 1300 a month due to the location. And they've been paying that same rent for over a decade now and never had it raised once. We do have to unfortunately increase that rent to 900 just to make numbers work from our side. And I mean, like I said, with location, it's two miles away from the university. So it's in a prime location here in Iowa. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up the duplex. Like I said, we're not gonna do a whole lot with it. Just a couple of cosmetic things and then just a couple minor tweaks. But other than that, not doing a whole lot with the duplex. So with that, we're going to move into the second property, which is the three staller. From here on out, the rest of the videos in this series, you're gonna hear us refer to it as the hangar. And that's simply just to keep the exact locations disclosed for all these properties. So each property we do have a nickname for, but we will get into that a little bit later. But for the hangar, as you can see within these video clips, it is a pretty big three stall garage, a lot of room for storage. It's got upstairs and downstairs storage spots. Now, looking at from the repair side of things, we're looking at right around that $12,000 range. And with that, we're going to do a brand new metal roof. We're going to put new siding on it. And we're actually filming from that location right now. So all these studs that you see behind me, those will all be sheeted in with plywood. Some of the spots are water damaged. We do have holes in the roof. That's why we got to replace that. So everything's got to come out that's rotted and redone. The garage doors, we've got four garage doors on here now. We're going to tear the one out that's in the back corner there. We're going to fill that in. And then these three over here, these are all going to be brand new black garage doors, all automatic right now. They're currently manual. And then above us, we have a bunch of old lumber that was left behind from the previous owner that we're also going to dispose of. But structurally, this place is pretty sound. All the walls are phenomenal. Um, the concrete floor is good. It's actually got a drain in it. So yeah, so we're looking at roughly $12,000 in repairs. Now the listing price, we aren't gonna list this unless with that big brown flip house, we might sell it with that if the uh, the buyer does want this simply because that flip house is only one staller. But again, we'll get into that when we actually do the project breakdown. So we might end up selling this with that house as well. For the profit, again, since we're not selling it, there's going to be no profit to be made until the long run. Probably five to seven years, we'll get rid of the duplex and this. To kind of talk about what I mean by that is right now we have it tied into the duplex that's right beside us. The city wouldn't allow us to have it be its own separate property. It's a separate parcel. But since it's not residential living, we can't just have it separate pretty much. So it was either tie it to the duplex, tie it to the new construction home or the brown house. And since we're keeping the duplex, we went that route. But to kind of give you some details on the inside of this garage, it is 1,152 square feet. Like I said, we've got three garages in the front. The middle one is significantly taller um, than the other two. And with that, we actually have a U of upstairs storage here on both sides. The garage is broken up into two sections. You've got a section over there, and then you've got two stalls over here. Over here, I would assume is mainly gonna be for tools, trailers, cars, that kind of stuff. And on that side, we might take a corner, have it be like a bar or something like that. But in the future, this is going to be a, a pretty cool place. But with all that being said, that pretty much wraps up everything here in the three stall garage. Now let's go next door to our new construction home. We're calling this the cat's cradle throughout this series. We'll go into more details on that here in just a couple seconds. But this house here, we are going to bulldoze and build a brand new spec home on. 
Now, to kind of walk you through the numbers on this project here, we did buy this house for $50,000. Now, the estimated repairs that are going to come along with this, we're going to have to demolish the house, which is $21,300, and that is including the trees, and then a brown garage that's a two-staller, and then a, another like storage unit almost type thing on the other side of the house. And with that, we're going to get rid of the white fence that's next to the three-stall garage, and then the two garages connected to that white house as well. And then on top of that, we do have to build an entire new house. So that we're looking at roughly $227,500. Now with that, we were given kind of a, a rough range of what price we could sell this house for. Again, this house is two miles away from the university, so it's in a great location. So we're looking at $379,000 to $399,000, which gives us an estimated profit of $81,000 to $101,000. Now the current house that you're looking at now, the White House, that is 1,200 square feet and was built in exactly 1900. So it is a very old house. When we purchased it, floors were falling through. It was very unsafe to live in. And I'm gonna go into the backstory here in just a second, but there were some city folk who weren't too happy we were tearing this down. And hopefully those people are watching this video and seeing how disgusting it actually is on the inside of this house because there was no way anyone could live in this house. But originally it was three bed and two bath that was eventually converted into a barn. And that's where the cat's cradle comes into play is they used to store exotic cats at this house. Um, you're going to see the, the cat cage room here. They had cages everywhere. The living room was lined with cages. Um, outside along the fence was lined with cages. On the floors, you can see that it's, it's very nasty. That's all cat litter, cat fur. They actually bred raccoons in this house. And stories that we've heard about this place from the newer owner and then the tenants is at night they'd actually leave the doors open and animals would crawl out of the sewer like raccoons and actually go and live in this house at night. He'd leave the lights on for them, he'd feed them, he'd take care of them. On top of that, he had like reptile cages, he had um, pigeon cages in the backyard. All around there were hundreds of animals inside of this house. So that's why we're calling it the Cat's Cradle House. And to give you a little bit more detail on that, the owner of that White House actually owned this entire block that we bought and then actually a bunch of houses further down on the street as well. This guy owned properties everywhere. We're gonna go into more depth about his situation here with the flip house because it's a better example to give you. But just know this guy was a massive hoarder and he liked things in large quantities. So that's why he had so many animals within that house. So now moving into the new construction home, we are building a single family home. It is a spec house and it's going to be just over 1300 square feet. It's going to have a finished upstairs, but an unfinished basement. And the reason that is, is just due to budgeting and, and just all business numbers related. That's what makes the most sense for us. Now we are going to list it before it's finished. So if a potential buyer wants the basement finished, they can tell us how they want that done. We can go ahead and do that for them along with upstairs. If there's certain finishes that they want, like cabinets, what cabinet hardware they want, certain flooring, certain lights, all that stuff just so we can make that sale process a little bit easier on both ends. Now, we have had many blueprint changes with this house. Originally, it wasn't going to be a walkout basement. We were gonna have a deck, but due to city coding, we did have to make it a walkout basement. There, was, there would have been way too much backfill, and with it being on a slope, that's just the route we had to take, unfortunately. Now, these videos are completely out of order. They're going to be uploaded in order, but this video is actually being filmed two months into the process of this house. And right now the Amish have put four days into the house and they're almost done with the roofing. So we are using an Amish crew out of Jessup. Um, they do fantastic work. On average, it takes them three weeks to build a new home. And through them, we are also using spawn and rows. But yes, with all that being said, you guys, that pretty much wraps up the new house. Um, and from there, we'll go into our massive flip house. This is the Brown Bear flip house. We purchased this house for $187,500. The estimated repairs for this house is $141,494. And with that, that is we're redoing everything in this house. We're taking walls out, we're putting beams up, all new paint, all new flooring, brand new kitchen, brand new bathrooms. Everything's going to be brand new in this house. Nothing's going to stay the same. So with that, we're looking at a listing price of roughly $439,900, which gives us an estimated profit of $110,906. Now, this house, it's got a very, very unique story to it. We'll start from the beginning. Like I mentioned earlier, this guy was a hoarder. So originally it was a ranch house that he had completely filled. And back in 2000, he ended up doing a, a massive, massive add-on to this house. He added on the entire upstairs. He added on 
the back of the, the main level, which is the sunroom and the living room. And then he added on two more rooms in the basement, one which is kind of set up to be an apartment and then another which is just a utility closet. So when that was all said and done, we're looking at a 4,057 square foot home. So again, this house is absolutely massive. Every room you go into is oversized. Nothing is small in this house. So when we originally bought this house, it was a four bed, three baths, and then it had one rough and plumbed bathroom in the basement. Now that's all going to stay the same for the most part, other than we are adding a master bath to it. So it's going to be a four bed and four bath. So like I had said, everything in this house is going to be completely redone. Nothing staying the same. Right now we are two months into this project and it looks night and day different from what it originally looked like. Now, what it originally looked like, unfortunately, I don't have any pictures on the inside. I can show you a couple pictures of the outside though. Outside, you're gonna see that there's trash everywhere. This man kept everything from tires to cat litter to you name it. They pulled 156 tires out of his backyard. Right now, I'm gonna show you a clip of what was actually inside of the White House. You might just think, oh, that's dirt. It's actually cat litter. This guy just didn't get rid of stuff. Now, talking to the nephew who actually took over all these properties three years ago, he was stuck cleaning all of these properties out for the last three years. And then eventually the city said, okay, yeah, you can go ahead and sell it. And throughout those three years, he told me that they found three deep freezers outside that were filled with meat and they were all rotted. He told me that they went through double digit 30 yard dumpsters, just clean out the brown house alone. And in the brown house, he was showing me interior pictures of what it looked like before. And he had a two foot walkway throughout the entire house. There was so much junk everywhere. It was piled up to the ceiling. They had a hard time even getting into the house to clean it out. Windows were left open so raccoons would crawl in at night. It was all around just a nasty house from the looks of it. And where we get the nickname Brown Bear from is upstairs, this massive room that you're seeing on the screen now that used to be filled with just stuffed teddy bears. So that's kind of where we got the nickname Brown Bear from. With all that being said, you guys, that pretty much wraps up the four properties that we just purchased. And from there, we're kind of going to go into the future of this YouTube channel, um, what to look forward to. and kind of just give you a breakdown of everything that's to come. So for those of you who are new here, this really doesn't make a difference. You haven't seen any other videos of me, but just know all the previous content is pretty much over and done with. All of the uh, designer, the streetwear, the Supreme, the Gucci, all those videos are over with. Just know that that is still a huge part of my life. I still collect designer goods, streetwear goods, all that stuff. I just love streetwear art when it comes to clothing. So that's forever going to be a part of my life. So you are still going to see that throughout these videos. So like the old vacation videos, probably won't do those unless it's like all of us guys going out to like Vegas or somewhere cool. Where we might film those trips. The abandoned exploration videos, as much as I'm going to miss it, I've kind of reached the age where I'm getting too old to do that stuff. My body's falling apart from working all the time and I can't do the fast getaways like I would have to. So those those videos are unfortunately over and done with. And with that being said, the reason we're filming this video now is because is over the last two years, I've gone back and forth, really, really thinking about filming videos like this. And I feel like now is the perfect time. We just bought a block. Now is the perfect time to kind of show you guys what it is that I do now, kind of how we run things and really just give you an insight to what a young real estate business can do. So I really just want to capture this project on film. And then on top of that, kind of documenting my life, um, almost as like a best word I can come up with is diary style, just kind of showing my life over the years, hopefully progressing, becoming bigger, better, expanding the business, you know, all those good things. With that, I'm gonna show and tell everything, right? If we lose money, I'll say it. If we make money, I'll say it. Um, it's gonna be an open book, really. Any any challenges that we face, I'll talk about. Really anything that happens, I'm, I'm an open book and I'm willing to share really anything. So now talking about the business, Morris Property LLC, we'll start from the beginning. and. With that, I was a five-year college student. College was not easy for me. As a matter of fact, I hated every aspect of it. Really everything I, I disagree with when it comes to college, but I'll save that video for a different day down the road. And the one thing that I really wanted in life was being my own boss. I don't like people telling me what to do. I struggle heavily with that. So I wanted to be my own boss. And with that, I, I don't like an average lifestyle. I like the, uh, the more luxurious life, I guess you'd say. It's always been very attractive to me. And I figured this was my best shot at trying to achieve that life. I also came to realize in college that there are two hards in life. It's hard to be broke and it's hard to get rich. And for me, starting out at the bottom, I knew that the only way to go was up. And so I read a lot of books. I watch a lot of entrepreneurs on YouTube and I definitely understood how hard it was going to be. I knew how time consuming it would be. There's been a lot of late nights, a lot of hard work that's gone into this, but we ended up taking that leap of faith two years ago and now we're here. So I guess you'd say we're doing pretty well with a lot more great things to come. So along the way, we, I've had a lot of help from a lot of great individuals. And the first one being my dad, my dad, 
he kind of took that leap of faith with me just because financially I wasn't set to go out on this journey alone. Not only that, I, I didn't have the proper education to just go buy a house, fix it up and sell it. He, he's been around houses a lot due to his childhood job, siding, roofing houses. He was there to step in, help me out. So it means the world to me. Thank you, dad. It's greatly appreciated. From there, my mom, my mom is kind of like the property manager in a way she does all the shit us guys don't like doing, sweeping, vacuuming, you know, cleaning cobwebs off the roof, painting stuff, buying everything on Amazon from lights to shower heads to you name it. So she's been a tremendous help in just making this whole process an ease so we can just build the stuff and she purchases it. And then we've got my brother Rylan. He is six years younger than me and he takes care of a lot of the yard work, mowing, weed whacking, blowing leaves, raking leaves, you name it. He takes care of all that stuff. So a big thank you to him as well. And then the two individuals who have given me a better education than my five years of college, Emsad and Adita. Emsad, he is a mentor figure to me. He is a, a real estate coach. My philosophy in life has always been, if you want the best, you got to work with the best. And Emsad to me is the best real estate mentor out there. This guy is just an entrepreneur at heart. You could give him a single pencil and he can make a million dollars out of it. This guy knows business like no other man I've ever met. And then, and his wife, Adita, she owns Vine Valley Real Estate. She has been a tremendous help. She took me in almost two years ago to be an intern there, and I've kind of stuck with it. She has been just phenomenal in this process. She's been super understanding of my schedule, lets me leave work when I need to, really allowing me to, to do my own thing while also working for them. And that's, that's greatly appreciated. It means a lot to me. But she's always checking in, making sure that I'm good with everything. Like I said, super understanding, just always super happy, just a down-to-earth, very sweet individual who I'm very, very thankful to work for. So yes, thank you, Emsa and Adita, for everything. It, it truly does mean the world to me how much I've actually learned from you guys. I can say I've grown a lot because of you guys. I've definitely got out of my comfort zone way more than I think I ever would have in my entire life. So I thank you for everything that you've done for me. So just to kind of finish up the Morris Property business section of this, you guys can expect to see a lot of bigger, better, more great things coming out of this channel due to this business. I've fallen in love with the sport of entrepreneurship. So this channel is going to be dedicated toward entrepreneurship. I love real estate, but I also like going bigger and better. So eventually we're going to branch out and do into doing more heavy stock investing, crypto investing, getting into the service industry, sales, all that kind of stuff. It's all stuff I have on my plate. Just right now, I'm not at a very good spot to do that both time-wise and financially. So eventually down the road, that is something that we are going to document. So if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. From here on out, this is going to be like a 10 to 15 video series of the building process of all of our lots here and just keeping you guys updated with everything that's going on. I have a very busy schedule, so unfortunately I do miss out on a lot of filming. I do apologize for that, but I'm doing the best I absolutely can. And with my dad and I, it's, it's more work than play. So most of the time picking up the camera to film doesn't really cross my mind. So we do miss a decent amount of stuff, but we will keep you guys updated on everything that's going on. So twice a month, you can expect to see videos from us. One being for the flip house and this three staller, and then another video for the demo project. So right now, these are very low budget films. We're filming on two iPhones and we're using studio lights from the office. So eventually we're going to upgrade. We're going to get the big fancy gimbal, the big fancy drones, the big fancy cameras, all that good stuff, the nice mics, not this $20 one off Amazon. It's going to be higher production videos down the road once we get there. I want these videos to start looking like Amon Godzi's videos, Andrew Tate's, Tristan Tate's, Jordan Welch's, and Luke Belmar's, just the higher up entrepreneurs on YouTube. I love the way they film things. And if you guys are young and into the entrepreneur game and you don't watch them, I strongly recommend them. They give a lot of great advice. So yeah, so we're going to do the absolute best we can with what we've got here, but just bear with us. As time goes on, we will make a lot of upgrades. And then finally, the filmer, we've got Dawson. Dawson has been a tremendous help in not only building these houses, but taking time out of his day to film contractors working, come over late at night, film videos like this. He is new to YouTube and content creation. So right now he's the filmer. Eventually we're going to start splitting things up. So he's learning how to edit, learn Photoshop, all those good things. And eventually we're going to be a pretty well-rounded YouTube channel, but big thank you to him. And yeah, that was a lot you guys, but again, it's been almost four years since I've uploaded onto this channel. So again, thank you so much for watching. It does mean the world to me. And if this content does interest you, be sure to subscribe, drop a thumbs up, comment down below what types of videos you want to see from us. We're pretty much open to any type of video, entrepreneur based or, you know, real estate, whatever it may be. Just let us know what you want to see and be sure to look out for the, the future videos to come. And yeah, that's pretty much everything I wanted to share here in this video. So with all that being said and having that all been said, it's been your boy Dreezy. Peace out.